All right, guys, the day has finally arrived. It is Monday, April 8th, 2024, and this is the UFC 300 preview. I cannot wait to talk about this card, Marcel. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. This card is a fucking amazing card. From top to bottom, it, I think it's the deepest card the UFC's ever put on. I don't think that's a hyperbole at all. Um, from the opening fight of the night up until the main event, you have a card layered with former champions, current champions, and just exciting matchups. A lot of fights are, are pretty close in the odds, too. Like, a, a lot of them are under minus 200 favorites. A lot of the fights can go either way. A lot of live dogs in this card. Can't wait to talk about this with you, Marcel. Really, I've been looking forward to this for a while now. I, I always look forward to the podcast with you, Marcel. It's, it's honestly... Yeah, like, you better do. <laughs> I know, but, like, you know what? Like, uh, for me, it's, like, two uh, two hours of the week I enjoy the most. You know, two of the hours of the week I enjoy the most. So, That's I always look forward to it, but, yeah, of course. But this one particularly, Marcel, has just got me really excited, dude. So... Let me get your thoughts, man. What do you think about this card overall? I mean, you have yeah, to man. Yeah. It's a fun card, man. Over a dozen uh, of uh, former or current champions on it, you know. Uh, main event, like the two second best light heavyweights going against each other. So that's fun. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, looking forward to it, man. It's a, it's a good card. It's, it's stacked from top to bottom. Um, yep. Yeah. I mean, what, what else can we say? You know, you, you, you got the opening with two champions pretty much, former champions. All I can say is I really hope there's no injuries this week and that we don't lose any. Bro, points. don't because say that. I, I was gonna think because this card hasn't got it hasn't. I got know, a hit but that's the thing. Like we've got lucky here. Something's gonna happen, man. There's <laughs> yeah, no exactly. Way everyone. The one thing I'll say is though, because there's so many like like respected fighters and veterans that don't really miss weight. I don't think we'll have any weight misses. I don't think. Um, but we'll see. You never really know, right? You really never know. All right, man. Um, let me get some comments and we'll we'll get into the uh, the breakdown, guys. All right, Knox, what's up, brother? Glad to have you here, man. Time Collectibles, glad to have you here as always. Jamie, man, this is the one. This is the best card UFC's ever put on, I think. On paper. Again, on paper. You know? You never know how it's going to play out. I hope it's not a bad card. I think it's going to be amazing. Though. Joe, it's great. Joe, it's great. Uh, I I laughed when I just saw this comment, Glenn. This is... I mean, they better be giving out more bonuses than that. They better. I would think they give a bonus for every finish on this card. That's my They guess. should do the 300k for this card. They should. I mean, but I was checking... Someone had said, like... In the Discord, like, oh well, maybe they'll do 300k. But I looked back at UFC because UFC uh, 100. I want to say at UFC 100 they gave 100k. I want to say that. I'm gonna double check. Um, let me double check right now. Yeah, they gave 100k bonuses at UFC 100, and then UFC 129 that was in Toronto. They gave 129k. I, I gotta tweet that right now. I hope they do 300k bonuses for UFC 300. They should, I but UFC 200. I can't do that. It. UFC 200 they didn't. They only gave up four bonuses. UFC 200 was actually a pretty good card. So we'll see. John, what's up, man? Surprised the early bird was $69. Is that for the uh, pay-per-view price? That's that's a good price. It's a great number, too. <laughs> yeah, Kayla's the one fighter to win, but again, you know, she's, you know, she's she is an Olympic athlete, so, I mean, you, you would think that she'll be disciplined and professional here, but we'll see. I mean, her body might not allow it. We'll see. Prediction, Connor announced 300. Do you have any, any insight into that, that they announced the 303 card? Do you know anything about that? I think they will do it probably during the uh, presser or during the uh, during the broadcast, and I hope they do it during the presser. Do you think they'll announce three hundred two with Dustin and Islam? Yeah, I think three hundred two will be Dustin and Islam. I think three hundred three will be Connor against Chandler. That's what I good. Think. I mean, those are good fights. You know, I feel, I feel like Gaethje got kind of screwed here, but I think three hundred four will be Aspinall against Blades too. Awesome. There you go. That's Marcel, what I think. That's what I think. Yeah, yeah. A little birdie told you. We'll see. <laughs> Cod pass, I can't wait, man. Craig, I, I I can't wait either, dude. We got a lot of people in the chat right now, which is awesome. Yeah, there'll be a fight now, that's for sure. Uh Daniel getting underdog energy from Adam. I'm taking a big underdog today. We'll see who it is. I think I think like I think I have four dogs. I think I have four. Rudy, it's a great card. I mean, it's just full of legends, dude. It's sick. I tweeted that. Main event was did you that's good. What do you mean better if main event wasn't a routine title defense? Yeah. Uh but uh, I mean, it's still a good fight. Uh, can we say on paper it's the greatest period of all time? I can't think of one that's uh, better. I mean, uh, again, the UFC 129 card in Toronto was fucking amazing too, but this card has the potential to be the best ever. Antoine's going to the card. Antoine, man, that's awesome, dude. Have fun, buddy. Yeah. That's awesome. Fucking awesome. Well, in fact, Diego Lopez is on the card. He deserves it, dude. If UFC 304 is July 17th, it might be an overnight or cage warriors in that date too. Hmm. Oh, they're going to do like, like, was Hendo Bisping like overnight? I can't remember. Was that an overnight card? Glenn, you would know. The second one. But yeah, oh, the, the two or four. Yeah, it was overnight. Yeah. And, yeah, and, yeah. 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 So that, that that could be the case. All right. 
enough of that. Let's get into the card, guys. We're going to work our way from the bottom, work our way to the top, as we always do. In the first fight of the night, a battle between two former UFC champions as Cody No Love Garbrandt takes on Davidson God of War Figueredo. And the odds right now have Davidson Figueredo is a pretty big favorite here. Minus 305, Cody Garbrandt plus 245. Marcel, start us off, man. Go ahead. Yeah, man. I mean, intriguing fight. Although we, we were supposed to get this a flyweight a couple of years ago, right? But yeah, for the happen. title. Cody yeah, got uh, COVID. Yeah. I, I think Davidson looked really good in the Rob Font fight, man. This first fight at 135 in the UFC going going to 135. I think he looked really good. And if you look at Garbrandt, uh, yeah, Garbrandt won his last fight against Brian Callagher, but I don't think you can can compare Callagher to Figueredo. Um, that's a massive step up, man. That's crazy as it sounds for a former champion, right? Uh, Garbrandt, if he wins, he probably revives his career and he's back in the top 10 of the division, man. It's crazy. Um don't think it will happen. I think Cody is a good fighter, man, but I feel like his, his chin through the years is becoming a little bit more suspect. suspect. And if you look at Figueredo, he looked really sharp against Font. Um, and Figueredo's chin is not suspect, you know? So um, for me, it's like uh, I think they will be standing. I, I, I honestly think that uh, Figueredo can knock Cody out, man, to be honest. And yeah. uh, I think I'm going with uh, Figgy in the second round by TKO or knockout. Yeah, I, I have to pick Davison too. I mean, I, it's just hard for me to trust Cody's chin. You know, he's been knocked out so many times, counting it up right now, four times in this last... Well, he has been on a little bit of a roll, but again, Trevin Jones and Brian Keller... Trevin Jones is not in the UFC anymore, and Brian Keller, is he still is he still on the roster or was he cut? I can't remember, but... He's cut, he's cut. He got cut too, right? So, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, he was being not great guys. It was good to see him get back in the win column, but, like, this is a different matchup. And I gotta be honest, I was surprised they booked this fight. Because like to me, this is a this is a bad matchup for Cody. I think I, Cody's a don't get me wrong, he's a good fighter, man. I mean, we've seen that throughout his career. He's a really good boxer. He's got good wrestling. Like the skills are all there, but the chin's not. That's the problem, right? And by the way, the chin goes. It's tr- you're in trouble. What are you saying? Will you ask what Scott Trevin Jones is Scott? I'm I, I don't know, but Keller. no, no, I don't know about Kelleher. No okay, idea. yeah, no worries. Glad, glad to clarify there. But I'm yeah. just saying Kelleher is like bottom of the division right now. You know, and I like Brian, but. It's just, like this is a huge step up, dude. And like, I'll tell you this: if this was Davison's first fight at Bantamweight, and we hadn't seen him fight Rob Font, I would be more like interested yeah. in Cody here. But because we saw Davison fight Rob Font and beat the fucking shit out of Rob Font, who's a really good fighter, how do you not pick him here, man? And not only did he beat him on the feet, he also took him down a bunch too. Um, I think Figgy's an absolute beast. I know he's a little bit older; he's thirty, he's turning thirty-seven years this year, which is crazy. But like, still a very dangerous guy. Um. I think he hurts Cody, knocks him down, it probably knocks him out. I mean, I think a submission is also possible, Marcel. Um, a lot of his wins are by submission, and uh, you can't totally discount like a sub and club or a club and sub. I think that's possible, but I just think Cody's chin is going to be tested here, and I think it's not going to last uh, past the test. So, gotta go with Davis and Figueroa. I understand the odds three to one. I think is a, it's fair, you know, and, and I think he I think he opens the card with with a bang with a knockout here. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a uh, it's a good. Really good fucking fight to open the card because truthfully, Marcel, this fight um, should be a it should be a five round main event for a fight night card. I think instead could be right, yeah. yeah. So, anyways, really good fight to open the card. I mean, you can't get better than this. All right, we'll go to the next fight here. We got Jim Miller competing at UFC 300. He also fought UFC 200 and 100 and won both his fights. Now he takes on Bobby Green at UFC 300. Battle of veterans. Bobby Green minus 180, Jim Miller plus 150. You know what's crazy? It's like you think Jim Miller's like this old dude and he's 40, right? But Bobby Green's also 37. So it's not like Bobby's like 30. Like you think he's a lot younger, but he's really like not that much younger. But regardless, Marcel, you know, I'll start on this one. Um, I like Bobby Green in this fight. I know he's coming off that really bad loss to uh, Jim Miller, but or sorry, Jalen Turner. Jim Jalen Turner, Jalen Turner, excuse me, who's also on this card it was a bad loss. And Kerry Hatley blew that stoppage. Like, that was a really late stoppage. Like, the dude took extra shots. And I get it. He's His chain is going. I mean, it is. He's been knocked out a bunch. But, again, you saw against Tony Ferguson. And I understand that's, like, the corpse of Tony Ferguson. I get that. But, like, that was a really good performance, dude. And then even against Grant Dawson knocked him out, that's a good fucking win. Um, Jim Miller is a legend. I love the guy. I think he's a Hall of Famer. I'll, I'll, I'll die on that hill that he's a Hall of Famer. He's looked great the last couple of years. He's really, really turned his career around. But, at the same time, the guys he's fighting are just not – that good. I mean, really, like, like Gabriel Benitez, very flawed fighter. Jesse Butler should not be in the UFC. Alexander Hernandez beat him. Cowboy Cerrone was half 
halfway foot halfway out the door. Nicholas Motter's barely in the UFC. Eric Gonzalez is not in the UFC. I mean, these guys are not that great. So, like, he's been given some really easy fights. I mean, that's the truth. And I love Jim Miller, but he's been given easy fights. And, you know, he's done what he had to do, and he's looked good. And I've been picking him, and he's been an underdog in these fights too, Marcel. We've been picking him on the podcast. We're like, why is he an underdog? And we've been betting on him. But to me, like, this is a fight Bobby Green should win. And regardless of, of how he's been looking lately, I, I just think that, you know, Jalen Turner, Drew Dober, and Islam, they just hit to me harder. And I know Islam beat him on the ground or whatever. He took him down. But to me, those guys just have the different type of, of, of power and, and, and wrestling ability than Jim Miller. Um, I think Bobby wins the fight. To me, it's just like, how does he win? Is it either decision or knocker? I think both are possible. Jim's pretty tough. Probably goes a distance. I think Bobby's got a chance to knock him out too, though. What do you think, man? Yeah, I'm looking at you dying on that hill. But uh, no, I'm just kidding. I agree with you. Um, yeah, I, I feel the same way, actually, man. I feel like uh, Jim Miller, if he has to win, it's probably by submission. It has to be early. You know, uh, Bobby has a good cardio. Um, his stand-up is, is, I think, better than Jim's is. Uh, yeah, it's pretty fun, man. Jim Miller from Sparta, New Jersey, right? And he's on UFC 300. It, it all fits. Um, I, I'm also on Bobby Green here. I think he wins a decision. I don't think he finishes Jim. Um, Jim Miller has a chance if he gets him to the ground, and he, but Bob Green said easy to finish. Um, Jim Miller yeah. decision or I think, Bob Green decision. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I think Bobby's just gonna like pour volume on in this fight. I think it's a good fight for because he's so much faster, right? Like he should be way faster in this fight. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think he wins. Uh, it, it's 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 a good it's a good fair fight though. It, what, what I was gonna say what I like about these fights the first two. We're not guessing like some of these fights we talk about in these UFC Vegas, these Apex cards, right? Where you got two guys for contender and you're like, yeah, I think this guy wins and he should win. But like these are guys we've seen fight like 20, 30 times more so. Like yeah. I think we have a pretty good feeling of who's going to win this fight. That's why I like this fight a lot. I've watched Bobby Green for so long. And we talked about Strike Force in the last podcast. I mean, this guy was there. Jim Miller, we've been watching forever too. So I think we both have a pretty good view of like how this fight's going to go. And I'm pretty sure Bobby Green wins. So we'll see how, we'll see how it goes. All right, we'll go to the next fight here, guys. We have Jessica Andrade taking on Mar Marina Rodriguez, women's uh, flyweight fight. Right, or is it Two strawweight? Friends. Let me double check. Strawweight, yeah. Yeah, Marina's strawweight. always a strawweight. Yeah. Uh, well, she did fight, was it? Uh, yeah, Wallerson, but it was short notice. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, strawweight fight, my bad. Um, odds for this one, it's pretty close odds. It is minus 135, Jessica Andrade. Plus 114, Marina Rodriguez. Or shall I let you start on this one? What do you think? Um, I'm picking Marina Rodriguez here, man. Uh, I know she wanted this fight. I know Jessica didn't want this fight, to be honest. You know, um, Both girls are really good with each other. They have trained with each other before. Um, and I think, listen, man, Jessica looked good against Dern. I give her that. But this is a completely different matchup. You know, uh, Marina is also a striker. And yeah. I think Marina is, uh, Marina is still more... Um, I think she's more technical than Jessica. Jessica is just more of a, more of a brawling kind of style, you know. And I think if Marina, Mar I think Marina can pick her apart for three rounds. You know, as a three rounder or the five rounder, um, Marina Rodriguez by being too technical, picking her apart, winning a decision. That's my but that's my view on this fight. Hit the button. Well, we have a contestant's dog early in the card, guys. I'm going with Marina Rodriguez as well, so I like her here too. I think it's a great fight. I actually really looking forward to this fight. I saw that someone did a poll and like this was like the lowest fight. I don't I don't buy that. I think this fight's gonna be awesome. I think it's gonna be a war. These girls are are they're very dangerous. Um and again, they're fighters we've seen fight a lot. Nothing but respect for both fighters. Someone has to win, someone has to lose. I'm I'm picking Marina. The reason why is because, like you said, I think she's a little more technical. And dude, that last fight with Michelle Waters and Gomez was absolutely fucking brutal. I mean, the way she looked, it was like unbelievable. And you could say the same with Jessica with with Dern, but to me, like like Watterson is, is is a pretty good striker. Dern, not really, you know. So the fact that she was able to destroy her like that is is interesting to me. I get it, you know. She did get caught against Lemos, who's got a lot of power, and then Verna took her down. I just don't think Jessica's going to take her down. It's not really her game. Like she can take you down, but she doesn't do it. Like the last time she, she just likes to brawl. Yeah, she likes to brawl, and it's fun to watch. And I love her. Yeah, I I, I love Jessica. Too. I mean, to me, she's a Hall of Famer. I think. I oh oh yeah yeah no doubt. Yeah. But I just, I really like this matchup for Marina. I don't know, Marcel. Like, and I, I feel the same, said the same thing. I just yeah. really like this matchup for her. And like, the line was, I think it was minus 110 like this weekend. And I looked at it today and I'm like, oh, the money's coming in on draws. So I like Marina in this fight, guys. I, I think a decision. Do you think, it, do you think she can knock her out? 
It's possible, possible, but I, I think that she just keeps it technical and she stays away from, from uh, the inside, and I think she picks her apart from the outside. That's what I think yeah. uh, would be the most smart thing to do, you know? And these girls know each other, so... They do, and, and just Marina's just so much taller and longer, too. I, th I think that that length will give Andrade problems in this fight. I, I really like this fight, though. I think this could be, a, like, a sleeper fight of the night. I really do. And, uh, by the way... Marina Rodriguez. Yeah, go ahead. By the way, I hope, Carl, your comment, I hope you have lots of uh, fun with your wife and... Uh, in, uh, in Las Vegas, it's uh, great, man. I uh, hope oh, yeah. you really have a good Marcel, time. Marcel, we gotta we gotta send you to Vegas sometime, man. Marcel still isn't been, guys, but uh, we're gonna have to get him out there. Well, we should do like a, a GoFundMe for Marcel. Say Marcel to Vegas, GoFundMe. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, yeah. All right, we're gonna get two seats for you, though. Yeah, well, I just wanted to say that. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted anyways, to say that. Anyways, let's let's get back to the card, though. But uh, there's a lot of comments in the chat, guys. I just want to get through the card, but. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I think we all agree that this card is just amazing. There's there's so much to talk about. All right, we'll go to the next fight here. Guy mentioned earlier, Galen Turner, the tarantula, who uh, still gives Marcel nightmares with his tarantula posts on Instagram. Jesus, man. I know, right? Takes on Hanato Money Makanu, who probably has the best YouTube game going for the UFC fighter right now. After this one, Jalen Turner is a uh, minus 230 favorite. Money Makanu, plus 195. I'll start on this one. I really like Jalen Turner in this fight. I think it's a really good match for him, man. I really do. Um, listen, I'm obviously a big fan of McCann. We all are. The guy's ground game is great. He's got decent striking. The chin's still a problem for me. You know, he's been knocked out, what, four times, three times in the UFC. Jalen Turner hits fucking hard, dude. All and it's the other thing about Jalen Turner. All his wins are by finish. All of them. I mean, he's been in some close fights recently, decisions. Here's the thing, Marcel. Like, you look at his record recently, right? Like, had he won those fights with Hooker and, and Gamron, they were close fights, right? Where would he be now? He'd be in like an eight fight win streak. Like he'd be fighting for a belt, maybe. So yeah. the guy's fucking good, dude. I, I I just think he's so dangerous, and I think he's going to catch McCannio and knock him out in this fight. I really like Jalen Turner here in the survival survivor pool. I took him. He's just bigger, longer, younger, more dangerous. I think he knocks McCannio out in the first round. What are you going to say? Oh damn. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm also on Turner, but knockout first round. That's that's. I think so, dude. Out. It's possible, you know. Um, I think stylistically not a good matchup for my Kano, probably. Um, yeah. I also think he can get the finish. Um, I, I'm going second round. I'm going second round. I think my Kano can, can survive the first round. It's possible, too. I mean, I just, I just looked at his – just to just take a look. Busy yeah. Evan and Kareem Zabi knocked him on round one, and they all do That's round two. So That's true. So it could be round – anyway, I'm not, I don't bet round props. And it was 45, right? Really, yeah. Uh, only if they're like huge numbers and you take like a late finish for someone who gasses. Like I wouldn't bet the round problem. Just giving my prediction. I think him by finish though is a good is a good call because all his wins are by finish. And I don't see why he wouldn't finish this fight. And if it does go the distance, it's probably because Bacano's just holding him to the ground. I mean that's probably what would happen, right? So I don't think it goes the distance and and Jalen Turner wins. Um, Adam, I think Turner knocks him out. We're gonna say where was that Moicano fight against Korean Zombie again? What what place? It was a real place I never heard before. I remember. That was in the Greenville, South yeah. Carolina. Which yeah, I, exactly. think, I think Stephen Thompson's from there. I think. Okay. But uh, yeah, that was a that's a random. So, just to, just like fight. remember where that fight between uh, Shakare and Musasi, Mash Kantucket or something. Remember that? Yeah, there's yeah, there's been some uh, <laughs> interesting places they've, they've gone to. Uh, Moncton. Sure. Yeah, Monk. Hey, man, I went to Moncton last year and uh, two years ago, and it, it's a nice little city. This is something like Compton. <laughs> no, not as close. <laughs> that sounds like it. <laughs> All right, we'll go to the next fight. Here we got this is another banger, dude. Sodi Yusuf taking on Diego Lopez. Holy shit. I mean, what a fight, it's right? It's a difficult fight, this one. This is a, this is a tough one. Um, odds for this one, Diego was the favorite. Minus 148, so Deke plus 124. Uh, you want to start? No. <laughs> no. Okay, I'll start. I'll, I'll start. I'll start. Okay. I think this one's tough. I, I do. Like, I think tough. this is one of the really close. Like, they're all, there's a lot of close fights, but this one's tough because – I don't want to write Sodik off just yet because, man, he had That's Barboza. Similar. He had him out. I feel the same Barboza way. just such a fucking legend came back and won that fight. You know, it was such a war. And, and had he won that fight, I mean, he'd be favored here for sure, right? So people are kind of thinking he's on a decline. And, and, you know, I don't know, maybe. I don't know. It's hard to say. But the thing is, I'm just so high in Diego Lopez, dude. That's the thing. Like, I really like this guy, man. I really like him. Looked amazing in the UFC. He had a crazy fight with uh, Evloyev. He, he had, you know, he didn't win, but put him in a lot of trouble. Destroyed Gavin Tucker. Destroyed Pat Sabatini. We know he's got a crazy ground game. He's teaching all those fighters. Uh, was a Lobo in, in, in Mexico. All their jiu-jitsu coach. Amazing jiu-jitsu. 
Mm-hmm. And his striking is pretty good too. He's got power. And so Deke has been knocked out. He's been hurt. So Deke's a really good fighter, dude. But I kind of think Diego Lopez is going to finish him. That's my guess. But at the same time, though, it wouldn't surprise me if, if Till Deke won either. You know, so this is one I'll stay away from. I'm not as confident in this pick, but I think Diego Lopez probably finishes this fight. What do you think, dude? I think that we'll have they're going to be a decision in this fight, to be honest, man. I think we'll be close. Um, I'm really on the fence with this one because I feel like Yusuf can win this fight as well. You know, yeah. I think many people picking Diego because he has been spectacular, but also he's been a fan favorite, you know, and I think many people yeah. picking him because of that. But Yusuf isn't the worst fighter, you know what I mean? So for me, it's like super close. And I think if you, I think Yusuf has, has a better striking of the two, to be honest. I think you, Lopez has a better ground game. Yeah. Um, Man, I'm going to take a gamble here, man. I'm going with a decision for 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 Yusuf here, man. There you go. Hit the button. There you go. There's a dog pick. I mean, honestly, this was one that I was kind of close on. Ultimately, I went with Lopez, but I could see it going either way. I think this is, a, this is a tough fight to call. You know, there's a lot of fights in this card. This is one I wouldn't bet on. I mean, if you guys have a better read than us, then do it. But, like, for me, it's just one I'm staying away from. All right, let's go to the next fight here. We got Holly Holm taking on Kayla Harrison. And the odds for this one have Kayla Harrison, big favorite here, minus... 425 plus 330 at home. I think some money is coming in on Holly Home. I want to get your thoughts on this fight, Marcel, before I get my pick. What do you think about this fight? It's a, such a style, a clash of styles, you know, this fight. You know, you got Holly Home, who has really some really sharp striking. And there, Kayla, who will try to get the fight to the ground and finish it there, you know. Um, yeah, you can probably see after one minute what's going to happen, probably. Uh, and the thing is, like, Kayla has beat almost everybody. She also beat Pacheco. She lost to her the second time. But she didn't look amazing, you know. And the Aspen Lat fight last time out wasn't amazing. You know what I mean? So I, I think there is some uh the you can uh, you can gamble on Holly a little bit, you know what I mean? Uh, listen, Holly is on, also not on a prime anymore, whatever. But Kayla, man, this this is such a difficult fight, you know, because I feel like I feel like the most obvious pick might be Kayla, but I feel like Holly can still win this fight. You know what I mean? Um, man, I'm, I'm just – I'm going for the dog here. I'm pay, taking Holland by decision. I'm just wow. doing it. Wow. Hit it for me too, dude. Hit it for oh, me, bro. Oh, my let's God. Go. <laughs> let's go, baby. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's fucking do it. Hit it for me, man. Let's go. Hit yeah, it. I did. You didn't okay. hear it. I didn't, didn't hear it. I was too excited. <laughs> I mean, honestly, we don't pick these huge, crazy underdogs usually on the show, but, I mean, I don't think you can pass up Holly Homer at plus 230. You have to take a shot on her, guys. You have to because she's the much more proven fighter. Um, she's actually fought at Bantamweight many times, and she's still a good fighter, you know? I know she's 42. I get it, but I think she's still a quality fighter. The level of competition is night and day between these two fighters. I mean, mm-hmm. Holly's been beating the best of the world for a long time. She still has a loss to the best of the world, but she's been competitive with them, you know? Yeah, she has yeah. two wins over Peg, who's the champ right now. She beat Aldana. You know, these are big wins, obviously, Rousey years ago. But, you know, I, I get it. She did lose her last fight against the grappler. I understand that. But, man, I'm I'm looking at Kayla Harrison. And, listen, I get it. You know, Olympic athlete, great grappler, strong as fuck. But, Marcel, look at her resume. It's just – it's terrible. I'm sorry, but it is. It's just not – it's not good. She got a cut to 35. And that, too. I mean, well, let's talk about her resume first. Yeah, her sorry. only good win, in my opinion, is is uh, Larissa Pacheco. That's her only good win. And she beat her a few years ago, and then they fought again. And people aren't even talking about this. She got beat up pretty bad in that in that trilogy fight with her, man. You know? She beat Aspen Ladd, but Ladd is just at the end of her career at this point, you know? The other fighters, like, if you look at who she beat, Marina, Martina Gindrova, Kaylin Young, Marina Mokdentina, Mach, uh, Circus Pivak's wife, Taylor Guardado, Jenna Fabian, Cindy Danois, Marina Morais, like, like, her... Second best win is is her best win is is Pacheco. Her second best win is Vlad. Her third best win is probably Cindy Dan Watt. Dude, it's just not good. I think that she was given. Re- I watched all of her fights in PFL. By the way, Me too. I, Me I too. pretty much picked her every fight in PFL. Yeah. They were no brainers. She got. We talked about the matchmaking in the last podcast. She got easy fights in the first two rounds and then won the million dollars like what two or three times and then, twice and then lost in the third time she did it. She's never proven that she could make one thirty five. I, I question that. Even if she makes the weight, she's going to be probably tired if she doesn't finish the fight. I, I feel like if Holm had five rounds, it, I'd even like her even more here. But even in a three-round fight, dude, you have to take Holly Holm here as a big dog. I, I'm really surprised you're taking her, Marcel, but I'm really happy you did, man, because I thought I was going to be on an island on this one, dude. And you know what? 
I thought about this fight so much, you know, but I have to take a shot in Holly Holm and she's, 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 she's blown the odds a few times, right? She, when she beat Ronda, she was plus like 900. So it's not like she's immune to that. The other thing I was going to say is like, you know, in the, in, historically in the UFC, there's been a lot of fighters that came to the UFC with like tons of hype from other promotions and they lost. It's not like it's ha- that hasn't happened before. I think this could happen here too. Um, at, at these underdog odds, you, I think you have to take a shot in Holly Holm here. I think she wins a decision. What do you think, dude? Decision? Yeah, same. Yeah, decision. I think she has to probably overcome the first round, yeah. maybe because Kyla's going to yeah. be heavy yeah. grapple, try to get her down. But I think she wins yeah. the second and third round, probably. So, yeah. That, that's exact, dude. I broke down the fight exactly how you did. This is crazy. I, I'm really, we, here's the thing me and Marcel, we are, we're good friends. We talk all the time, but we don't talk about the fights really because I like coming in here and like just getting, just, hearing it for the first time for you. Mark. Mm-hmm. So I don't like knowing what you're going to pick. You yeah. know, I don't like it. I don't want any sort of bias. I, I just feel a lot better about the pick now too, after we talked about it, because to be honest with you, man, our consensus dogs are, are usually pretty decent, you know, and, and we'll see what happens. So yeah. And we'll see what happens guys. I'm getting pretty excited here, but like, again, <laughs> we, I, we've, we've, we've obviously had consensus dogs in the plus a- 100 and 200 ranges, but never plus three thirty dog. You know, Marcel, he's more never had a big one. He's more excited, uh, exciting about the pick than about the fight. <laughs> Watch her just go out there and get a wrestle. I mean, that could yeah. easily happen. Listen, Plus more. I mean, look at the odds. I mean, the odds are saying Harrison should do that. Mm-hmm. But I don't think this. Like I've seen, I've listened to a few other people talk about this fight, and a lot of people are just kind of skipping by this fight. Oh yeah, Harrison's going to take her down. And it's just like I don't think so, man. You know, again, I watched her fights, and, and she's definitely good, but mm-hmm. very unproven against this level of fighter. Like here's mm-hmm. the thing about Holly Holm. Okay. Obviously, the striking, you know, she's superior to striking. But her her um, grappling is not bad, you know? Her takedown defense is not bad. Her offensive grappling is not bad. I don't know, man. I, that fight with Harrison and Pacheco, the third one, I can't get out of my mind, bro. I can't do it, you know? So we'll see what happens. I mean, we're taking a 42-year-old here. But uh, they occasionally win. They occasionally do win. And, and uh, we're going to go with the preacher's daughter here, Marcel. So let's sure. do it. Let's fucking do it. All right, let's go to the next fight here, guys. We got uh, this is a fun one too. Aljamain Sterling taking on Calvin Cater. Odds for this one have Sterling is favored <laughs> minus one eighty, plus one fifty on Cater. Your thoughts on this one? Yeah, man, fun fight. Cater comes back after that injury, right? He got against Arnold Allen. He's on a two fight losing skid. Before that, he won against Giga Chikatse, uh, with uh, where I pretty much did what Max Holloway did to him. Um, Aljamain Sterling. I still think he got screwed by the UFC by not getting a rematch. He was a long serving champion. Um, goes to featherweight right now. I honestly think he will do well, man. To be, I, I think uh, Calvin Kader, we've seen he's good, but um, uh, he is his ground game is not elite level. He really needs to, he really has to have it from the striking. So he probably needs to make it a striking fight for three rounds or he has to put Aljo away. And I yeah. think Aljo is too slick to get him to the ground and probably, I don't know if he finishes him maybe, you know, but I think Aljo is too slick for him. He's too quick. Um, I'm thinking Aljo by, by submission, to be honest, man. I'm thinking Aljo by submission in the second round. That's interesting. So I like this fight a lot, by the way. I think it's a great, like, per- first yeah. fight for Aljo at 45. I agree. Cater's take on defense is, like, elite almost, 91%. So, like, it's almost impossible to take him down. But I think, again... What what grappler of this level has he has he fought before? I mean, mm-hmm. I think we did talk about this once. Like Zabit? I mean, Zabit's not even really a grappler. Zabit only had limited gas in that fight, you know. And that's the other thing. I mean, that's you know, a lot of people will say that. Um, I think Sterling's gonna do well in this weight class, man. I know he's a little mm-hmm. smaller, obviously he's gonna be, but you know, I just think Sterling's a good fighter. You know, he's obviously uh got an amazing ground game best backpack in the business right but i think his striking is not bad i mean i think about that, that uh, pedro munoz fight a few years ago where he had to strike got much and better he did yeah. really well in that fight and even this the uh was it the the Cejudo fight too i mean he landed a lot in that fight and who knows how the the o'malley fight plays out if it goes the full distance you never really know right um i have to go with sterling again this is one of the fights where i'm not as confident, Marcel. I gotta be honest because Cater's deep strike de- take down defense is it's fucking good. I mean, 91% is like an elite, but mm-hmm. I have to make a pick. I'm gonna take the guy who was you know been fighting more often. We didn't talk about the layoff. Cater hasn't fought in almost two years. He had a bad injury against Arnold Allen, has a fought since then. He's lost three of his last four fights. Two really good fighters, to be fair. It's a great test for Sterling. I think he passes it, but we'll see what happens. I think it's a good fight, though. Really good, really good matchup. Love it. Um, 
and you guys talking about Aljo's decision in the chat, that's the way he'd win this fight. I don't. I know you're saying submission, Marcel. It's possible, but throw, yeah. Kader hasn't been finished in like what, like a long time. Besides Aljo, well, but the, well, once has to be the first time. True, you're right. You're not wrong. I mean, it could happen. Maybe that's yeah. a really shrewd pick. We'll see what happens. But yeah, I got uh, I got Aljo Sterling here. All right, we'll go to the next fight here. We got oh the opening main card fight. Marcel can't wait to tell about this one. Yuri Prohaska taking on Alexander Rokic. Odd for this one. Rokic minus one twenty two. Minus one twenty two. Yuri is a plus one hundred two underdog. Very close odds, but Yuri is a slight underdog. Marcel hit the button for me. I gotta take the dog here, man. I'm gonna go with Yuri. You know, listen, Rokic is definitely a good fighter. He's the more technical guy. He's probably the better grappler, too. I mean, Yuri did smack Glover, but, you know, Rakic is a good grappler. We saw against Anthony Smith. He can hold you down. I just have a lot of questions about him. He hasn't fought in two years as well, you know, coming off that injury. Another guy, there's a bunch of fighters in this car coming off these long layoffs, right? But mm-hmm. Rakic is a good fighter, but I don't know, man. I mean, I think Yuri can, can knock him out. Yuri's just a crazy dude. You know, I've been really good at picking Yuri's fights historically, too. Um, the guy's a, a, an absolute beast. Um, he's just so wild, dude. I think he's just going to, like, go in there and brawl and and... and just make it a really like dirty, nasty fight, and Rakic won't, Rakic won't be able to like get technical. He's just going to get clipped early. Um, I know Rakic hasn't been, I don't think, officially knocked out. I mean, he did get injured in his last fight, but I don't really count it, right? But against Devin Clark in Toronto, it was like six years ago, but he did get rocked bad in that fight. And I think, you know, the way Yuri fights, the craziness, I think he can clip him, dude. So. Yeah, Yuri by knockout. I mean, Yuri finishes all his fights. I don't think I don't think it goes the distance. I think Yuri. I think Yuri knocks him out, dude. I don't agree with the odds in this one at all. You know, I can see like for instance the home fight. Definitely see why she's a dog. But in this fight, I just think a former champ. I know he lost to Pereira in his last fight, but like he's a former champ. What is Rakic really proven in the UFC? I think Yuri should be favored to win this fight. I think he's going to win. What do you think, man? Do you think we have a consensus dog or not? I'll say I'll say yes. Ah, I, I thought you knew it would be better. No, we don't have a consensus. Oh, now. damn. Okay, okay. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I honestly thought that Yiri would be favored in this fight, man, to be honest, you know? So I'm kind of surprised by that as well. That said, I think Rakic is going to make this a really boring fight and going to take <laughs> Yiri down and take a, a, hold him on the ground, going to out-wrestle him probably, you know? Yeah, yeah. I don't think he's going to make uh, – he's going to take any risks, to be honest. Uh, he's coming back from a long injury. He, uh, if he wins this fight, he's right in the mix for for a title fight, you know. So uh, I think he's going to make it. Uh, I, I think he takes him down, probably. Um, yeah, probably going to control him there. Try to get, try to TKO him by ground and pound, or trying to finish him. I don't think he finishes Yuri, but uh, I got Rockies by decision, man. Yeah. There, there you go. All right, let's go to the next fight here. We got. Uh, Opening main card fight. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of odd to say. Cody Brundage opening UFC 300 <laughs> against Bo Nickel. Let's just call a spade a spade, dude. Minus 2,100 plus 1,100. It would be the biggest upset of all time, according to the odds, if Cody wins. And I don't see it happening. Um, this is a bit, would it be a bigger upset than Shanna Dobson against Maria Agapova? I think it would be. I'm pretty yeah. sure it would be. I can double check that, though. Let me double yeah. check quickly. But I think it would be. Uh, it's crazy to say that that might be the, the biggest one right now because, you know. Maria is, Maria is not that great. Uh, she was plus nine hundred. So okay. yeah, Cody's plus eleven hundred. Listen, I, I like Cody. He's a he's a good dude, man. Honestly, he is. And I was really happy that that knockout in his last fight against Zach Reese was fucking awesome. I mean, we all agree on that. That was amazing. Yeah. Um, but Bo Nichols next level, dude. The UFC knows what they're doing here. I mean, it, it, to me, this would be a massive upset if he lost. Um, to me, it's just like does Bo knock him out or does he submit him? That, that's the that's the question. You can get both the good odds. My, laying minus twenty one hundred, don't bother. Go to a prop instead. For what I saw, it was like it's like really uh, tight for the, between the knockout and the, and the submission. I'm going to check right now. Nickel knockout plus one sixty. Nickel submission plus minus one ten. I'm leaning a sub. I, I think he subs him because I think he's going to take Cody down. Because really, like Cody off his back is just a, not a good fighter at all. We've seen that a few times. Like the Cedricus Dumas guy completely arrested him. That's not a good look. Um, so I think, and even sort of Malcoon obviously in the last fight too. I think that's the easiest path to win. Like, why, why let Cody potentially knock you out in the feet? He's going to take him down. I think he's going to submit him himself. First round submission, Bo Nickel. Hopefully, they give him like a top fifteen guy next after this because like they're going to have to. They can't just keep giving him these guys that he's going to destroy. But I think in this case, you know, I get it. He's the next 
wave of UFC fighters that could be a champion, and they want to set him up for success in his career. And I think he submits Cody Burns in the first round. So what do you think? Yeah, man, you know I hate this fight for the simple reason that I really like Cody Brundis. He's a cool dude, you know, always been nice. Um, and, yeah, I mean, how it can, how can you win this? By knockout, probably, you know, but I think Nico picks him down, probably subs him, you know. Yeah. The thing is, like, I hear everybody talking about Cody, that he's such an elite guy in the gym all the time. And, he, and for some reason in the UFC, I know he won his last fight by that slam. But for some reason, it doesn't does it doesn't come out, you know. Um, I think Nick, I think the same as you here, man. You know, yeah. um, but I'm really bored by the UFC. Listen, if Nickel wins this fight in the first round, they got to give him somebody in top 15. I don't yeah. want I don't want him to be on the Paddy train or on the Sean O'Malley train, where he has to fight uh, 10 unranked fighters uh, or or six, eight unranked fighters before he gets finally to that uh, <laughs> to build him. I, I hate that shit. You know that so. Yeah. Uh, no, you're, I completely agree that you're like you're right, you hit the nail on the head there. All right, um, go to the next fight here, guys. This is also one of the best fights in the card, obviously. Armin Saryukian taking on Charles Oliveira again. This I wish this fight was five rounds. This one I think really could use actually two rounds, but you know they already have three title fights. I mean, you, two two plus one, I'll say. I don't think this fight needs five rounds to be honest. Well, probably you know what? Probably not actually. I'm just saying like. Yeah, it deserves. Paper, five yeah, that's what that's pretty much what I'm saying. But you're right; it probably doesn't go the distance. Armand is minus two twenty five. Oliver is plus one eighty five. Again, I love these fights because we've seen these guys fight forever. You know, especially yeah. Charles. You know, we know how he, we know his game. I mean, he's amazing. I, I always pick Charles. I love the guy. You know, he's amazing. He's uh, you know, legend. He's a Hall of Famer, hundred percent going in the Hall of Fame. One of the greatest ever. And uh, I don't want to like write him off completely here because like he's only lost in like, the last what five years, six years is against Islam, right? But I think Armand is like the next Islam too. I think Armand is like so good, dude. I think he's amazing. Um, Armand is uh, an incredible grappler and he's got crazy knockout power. He's knocking guys out. His last, his last four wins, uh, four of his last five wins are by brutal knockout. I think he knocks Dubronx out, man. I, I do. I have to go with Armand here. I'm thinking he's going to play like the fight with uh, Paul Felder where he's going to take him down just land hellish ground and pound and finish him, dude. I have to go with Armand here, man. I I, I do. He, I know he, like Oliver is an amazing fighter. He's going to be a popular dog pick this week, and rightfully so because he's a legend. But for me, Armand is the real deal. I think he's the future of the division. And uh, I think he knocks Oliver out and, 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 you know, stamps his path, maybe do a rematch with Islam. That'd be amazing. So um, Armand by knockout. That's my pick, man. What do you think? Yeah, man, I don't want to be an I told you so guy to people, but I, I said before, man, Charles got uh, rocked in the Gaethje fight, in the Chandler fight, in the Poirier fight. And why did he win this fight? Because those guys were afraid with him to grapple on the ground. Yeah. Why did Islam win against him? He knocked him down and he just jumped on him and he got the submission, you know? And Armin won't be afraid to grapple with Charles in this fight if he knocked him down, you know? I think, I think... Armin knocks him out as well. I'm going with the first round knockout for Armin as well. You know, I respect Charles a lot. I think he's an amazing fighter, um, but uh, I think it's Armin's time now. So I'm going with Armin first round knockout. Yeah. Yep. Agreed. All right. Let's go to the next fight here, guys. We've got Justin Gaethje taking on Max Holloway for the BMF <laughs> title. And the odds for this one have minus 175 for Gaethje, plus 145 for Max. Yeah. I mean, I, man, we've said it a few times now, but this, this fight's amazing. I mean, it is. And this could easily be fight of the night, it, easily, because these guys are so durable that this probably does. I think it does go five rounds. I think they're just going to beat the fucking shit at each other for five rounds. They're their faces are going to be fucking meat grinder at the end of the five rounds. They're going to be bleeding everywhere. They're going to do that thing where they both put their hands up and, and walk around the octagon with their hands raised together because it's going to be a war. It's going to be an amazing, beautiful war. Like if you're an MMA fan, it doesn't get better than this. It really doesn't. You have Gaethje who. You know, Marcel, ever since I saw him in World Series of Fighting, I love this guy. I, I knew he was special. And uh, when he, I remember uh, when, when he made his debut in the in the UFC against uh, Michael Johnson and uh, he knocked him out in that crazy war, I'm just like, this guy is my favorite fighter. I mean, I, I try not to have favorites. Um, you know, I try to try not to, but, like, it's hard not to have this guy as one of your favorites because he's just so entertaining. And then Max, you could say the same thing for, right? Max is a legend. Max, I think both guys, again, Hall of Fame. You know, we talked about a lot in this card, Marcel. It's crazy, like. This guy Hall of Fame, this, this girl Hall of Fame. I mean, this card is stacked from top to bottom. So I mean, <laughs> it's so good, bro. It's so, like you got like ten Hall of Famers on this card. Yeah. Um, I love Max. I mean, I love him. You know, and and to me, he has the best chain of all time because 
he's absorbed like so many strikes and never being dropped. You know, but I think this is a fight where he's going to get hurt, bro. I really do. Like, again, he's looked great lately, but I, I can't get those fights with Volk out of my head where he did get hurt pretty bad in those fights. You know, he didn't get dropped, didn't get knocked out, but his face was cut open, couldn't see. He's a fucking warrior. I mean, it's an interesting fight. Don't get me wrong, because Gaethje's also very hittable, obviously. But the thing is, again, I just think the difference is the power at lightweight. I, I do. I, I think they just hit a little harder at lightweight. That's, that's why I got to go with, with Justin here. So I'm going with Justin. I'll take him a decision, though, because I don't think he knocks back. So I guess you're taking the dog, huh? No. It was, oh, you hit it, the, that's you not hit perfect. The no, I did it by accident. Yeah. I'm with you, man. I'm also going with the decision <laughs> for Gaethje here. Um, Max is almost impossible to finish, you know. Um, and it's going to be an absolute dogfight, like you said. They're yeah. going to probably stand and bang with each other, I think. Yeah. Um, Gage is also like uh, head of, uh, of uh, how do you say that, a chin of iron or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm going with a decision for it for Justin, but uh, going to be a fun fight for as long uh, for 25 minutes, you know. It's just an amazing fight. I mean, it really is. It, it's incredible. You know, I mean, again, you know, the BMF title is a, it's a gimmick, but I'm glad it's five rounds. All right, we'll go to the co-main event. We got Zhang Weili taking on Yan Jonan for the UFC Women's uh, Strawweight title. And Zhang is a huge favorite here, Marcel. She's the mm-hmm. second biggest favorite in the card. She's minus 500, <laughs> plus 380 for Yan. Um, listen, Yan's got a puncher's chance. You know, we have yeah. seen Zhang get knocked out by Rose. We obviously saw that. I picked Rose in that fight, I remember, a few years ago. Um, but I just think, you know... She's leveled up since then, dude. She really has leveled up. Actually, if she fought Rose again, I would definitely pick Zhang. In, Me too. In um, she's looked amazing in her last three fights. She destroyed Amanda Lemos. She destroyed Carlos Berger. She destroyed Joanna. She's leveled up. Joanna's looked good, too. She destroyed Andrade. She looked pretty good against Mackenzie after, you know, getting put in some bad spots. But I don't know, man. I, I That fight with Carlos Barza, I, I think like that's how this plays out. Because with Zhang, it's like if she was just a striker, hmm. You know, the, the odds will be closer, but, dude, the wrestling is so good. I think she takes her down and TKOs her, bro. I think she gets her, like, a really bad position, like a crucifix position, and just TKOs her with elbows and punches. Um, Willie Shang all day. I mean, minus 500, it's a lot, but I absolutely think she wins, and I think inside the distance is the way to go. What do you think, man? Yeah, man, it's like, um, I think uh, Zhang Weili only is going to lose against a real specialist at the division. You know what I mean? Somebody who's really good at one thing uh, who has a chance, and Yan Shonan, she's a good volume striker, I think. But she and she had the knockout over Andras last time, I know. But yeah. overall, she is. I know there's no disrespect, but she's pretty much a typical women fighter, you know, yeah. a lot of volume, but not a lot of finishes, you know. And um, she got destroyed by Carla Espaza. We all remember that. Uh, I, I think it will be a fun fight for as long as it lasts. But I think at a certain moment, Zhang either gets her down or knocks her down, and then she finishes it. So I'm going with the. I'm going with a second round TKO win for uh, Zhang Weili here. I'm just looking at the odds right now. You get plus 110 on a finish inside the distance. I think that's the way to go, guys. Yeah. She's minus 500, and I, I don't think the fight goes five rounds. Yon, I just I don't see her lasting five rounds with, with Zhang. Also, I will say this. You know, I'm glad we're seeing the fight, but it's it's got to be a little disappointing it's not taking place in China, Marcel. I feel like that was the plan the whole time. And it's weird. just it's never worked weird. out. It's kind of crazy, right? That never yeah. worked out. So, yeah, I think she takes her down and just beats the shit over and TKOs are from crucifix mount position, something like that. So, you know, back mount, something like that. Something where she just gets her in a good spot and finishes her. All right. We made it to the main event, guys. Man, this card's amazing. Alex Ferreira taking on Jamal Hill. UFC light heavyweight championship. Close odds here, too. Pereira minus 125. Jamal Hill, slight underdog, plus 105. I'll let you start in this one. Marcel. No, you, you, go for, you, you go first. Me? Okay. Well, I'll hit the button then for me. Okay. There you go. I mean, I'm taking the dog here, Jamal Hill. I love both these fighters. Don't get me wrong. They're both amazing. I I, I picked Alex and pretty I, – the only fight I got wrong was the first Izzy fight, I think. But uh, I, I've been really good at picking out Alex's fights. I mean, he's just an amazing fighter. I, I know his skill set really well. I, I really like him. But uh, Jamal Hill is a, a really good fighter too, man. And, and you know, for me, it's like he's shown so much skill in the UFC. I, I don't think people give him enough credit for what he's done. Like, he's just an incredible striker. And he's a really uh, strong, uh, you know – defensive grappler not that it's going to come into play here but i think he i think he could mix in takedowns too you know in this fight potentially um but i think on the feet you know i think it's going to be a fight that you know it's going to be competitive um but for me it's like it's a, it's a fight where i think jamal has more ways to win you know because it's mma if it was just kickboxing yeah i'd probably go with Pereira. but because it's mma and because jamal could go to the ground too 
I got to go with Jamal, man. I have to take a shot on him. Now, I am a little bit worried about this injury he had. Obviously, he's been out for over a year now. You know, not two years like Rakic and Cater, but still he's been out for a year. It's not good. But um, I also feel like he wouldn't come back if he wasn't ready to. I don't think he'd rush himself back. He would just take more time off. Um, I, you know, I get it. Per- per- Pereira is going to be a popular pick this week because he's an amazing fighter with huge knockout power. But Jamal really hasn't shown any weakness with his chin. And I just think he's really good, a good striker, good everywhere. And and he's one of those guys who's kind of like a natural in the sport. I mean, so is Alex, if you want to say that. Because um, he's transitioned better than maybe than pretty much anyone else, except for like maybe Brock Lesnar. Like, who else has had this quick of a rise to double champ? I mean, Brock wasn't even double champ, you know? But uh, what Alex has done is amazing. I just, I like Jamal here a little bit um, because of the well rounded game. And I don't think it goes the distance. So probably Jamal knocks him out. But uh, yeah, it's going to be a good fight, man, for as long as it lasts. Big the dog. What do you think, man? So the question here is after Johnny Walker, who's going to be the second title defense for Magomed Ankalaev? Is it going to be Hill or is it going to be Pereira? Um, yeah, I mean, I actually kind of feel the same way as you. Oh, wow. We got to uh, dog, guys. Here we go. I kind of feel the same way as you because I think Hill has more ways to win. And I feel like people are completely overlooking him right now, you know. Uh, I think Poatan has some good bad training with Poliana as of lately, so his cardio will be good. Um, but, I mean, man, Hill, you feel with Hill as well that he is really annoyed by people really uh, not giving him any chance. And I feel like... Listen, I know Alex Pereira. I like the guy. He's a good fighter, you know, but it's, he still feels unproven to me at light heavyweight. You know what I mean? He got a title shot of a very close fight against Jan Blaovic. Then he knocks out Yeri after dropping the first round, you know. And I think Hill has more ways to win. And also Hill hits hard. Don't forget that Hill hits hard. You know, he might be not as technical as Alex is, but he hits hard. Uh, I'm also with Hill. I think Hill knocks him out as well, to be honest, man. I'm going with the second round t- uh, TKO for uh, Jamal, Jamal Hill. Amazing. Amazing. Wow, man. That, that was a, that was a fun card to break down, dude. I mean, again, I look forward to it every week, guys, with, with Marcel. We love talking to fights, but this card is just special because, like, we were going through these fights. Like, fight of the night, performance of the night, Hall of Famer, legend. Like, it's it's incredible. Um, just um, to recap, go ahead. What you say? And we and we don't talk about the fights before no. the show, so yeah. not at all. Like I don't, I I had no idea you were gonna pick Holly home because I've been, I was, I did a lot of research on that fight this weekend, and I'm like, I gotta take her, man. I was, I thought I was just gonna be on a limb. I'm like, they're gonna think I'm crazy here, but uh, just going through the recap, we have three consensus dogs this week, Marcel. Three: nice. Jamal Hill, um, Holly Holm, and Marina Rodriguez, okay. and you also picked. Uh, so Deek Yusuf, I believe, right? That was another yeah. dog. And I think Yuri. Prohaska? Yeah. Yeah. So we had we each had four dogs and three consensus. Our consensus dogs are generally decent, you know. Um, so I'm, only I'm the last time, not but yeah, yeah, which remained. Yeah, that wasn't good. Oh but no, you know I, 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 the before also Luis Pajuelo. <laughs> we had some other. I think we had one one in between. We had some good dogs before. Yeah, we did. That's some really good yeah. dogs. Like I said, Marcel, like when, whenever we have like an alignment on a dog, I, I feel like I feel better about them. So, man, I can't wait for this card. I'll take a few questions here, guys. I, I um, got to think Michael, Michael Bay makes a good point the, that Hill was recently injured. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing guess. that's kind of a worrisome thing for me. Um, Straight Wager, what's up, man? Long time no talk to you. Glad to have you here, man. Um, Ankle Live should fight the winner. I, Ankle Live probably is, will be a champ in the next two years, I would say. Blake just just – Tell your boss that you're busy. So you have to go to the toilet and just watch in the toilet or something. I don't know what you do for whatever. Four hour toilet break. <laughs> Tatiana fight Whaley next. Maybe? I mean, I would Tatiana? like to see it, but I mean, she's she got injured when she was supposed to fight Lemos, right? So, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Guys, I know I, I know you guys were talking a lot in the chat. I really wanted to get through the card and keep my focus on it. But if you want to ask a few questions, I'll, I'll definitely take them. We're also uh, going to have to do the PFL short. For this, this we'll week. do. We'll we'll spend five minutes on PFL. I got to be honest with you. I, do, I don't care about it that much. Although no, it's better than last week's card. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I will this. We'll do PFL right now, and then while people are thinking of some questions, we can. Uh, yeah. We can we can answer them. Okay, so let's go to PFL really quick, guys. Um, I'm not even going to pull it up, Marcel. I'll just ask your thoughts on a few fights. How about that? Can I do that? Yeah, yeah sure. It, okay. Uh, Impa Kasangani against Alex Polizzi. I got Impa. Impa, yeah. Clay Collard, P- Patricky Pitbull. I got Clay Collard. Me too. Uh, Shoeface against Simon Biong. I got Shoeface. Shoeface, yeah. 
Lasbury Noel gets Michael Dufort. This one's interesting. I think Dufort's a live dog at plus 205. What do you think? I'm picking Burnell still. Okay. Rob Wilkinson, Tom Breeze. I got uh, Wilkinson. Me too. Sadibu's C against Josh Silvera. Uh, this is interesting, too, because Sadibu's moving up to 205. It's kind of weird. Um, he probably wins, though. He's, man, he's training some good guys that are extreme. You think he wins? Yeah. And then who else do we got? Uh, I'll, I'll try my best on this one. Dolvechen, Yagji, Mer- Magji Muradov. Is that how you say it? I can't remember. Dolvechen, Yagji Muradov. Yeah. There you go. Against Jacob Neto. Uh, Yagji Muradov is an underdog. You like him there? Yeah, I like him. Yeah, he's a dog. I like him, too. Gadzi Rabinanov against Solomon Renfro. Renfro's a dog. You like Renfro at all? Renfro is fun, fun fighter, man. He's a teammate of Shane Burgos at yeah. the at the what, what's it? No, uh, Tiger Shulman's. Yeah, um, I like him a lot, man. I don't know if he's gonna win, but he's definitely uh, he's definitely gonna fight hard like he did last time. So yeah, yeah, I agree. I think he's I think he's a live dog. Um, mm-hmm. Adam Piccolotti against JJ Wilson. JJ Wilson probably should win. This guy was like. Yeah. Such a good prospect a few years ago, and they just the bad weight cuts. Yeah. Elvin Espinosa against Anthony the Genius Romero. Romero's an underdog. You like him as a dog? A Canadian? Yeah. Me too. I like him there. And then Bright Purvis against Bruno Miranda. I would lean Purvis. I think Purvis is a really underrated fighter. I, I think I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see if we got some more questions here, guys. Uh yeah, I did. All right. What's a fun long shot prop that you guys might take a shot on? I mean, what's home by decision? I mean, I, I gotta see if there's odds for it. I'm checking best fight odds, by the way. Um don't see it there. I'll check. I'll check DraftKings one sec. Yeah, I think it look quickly because I think we both like it. And obviously, she's a huge underdog. So let me take a look. Da da da. Winning method. I don't know if they have the pre rooms up yet. No, they don't have it yet. Okay, that's something I would take a look at. Um, okay, let me think here for a second. UFC. Okay. Um. Someone had mentioned earlier, like Gaethje, or like in the, like late rounds, maybe. I mean, maybe Jang by like like a specific TKO probably would be interesting. I think. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think uh, I, I man props. Obviously, they pay a lot. I try to stay away from guys. I just stick with money lines. There's so many ways to win and lose in this sport. It just makes it so complicated. I feel like. Um, by the way, Blake, you had asked. Her, I did see your question. You said, "What are your three most confident picks?" Um, for me, it would be uh, Bo Nickel, Zhang Wei Li, and Jalen Turner. Who are your three most? Yeah, the first two, probably. Um, third one, the third one. Biggie? I'd say Armand, man. Or Armand, yeah. That's a good pick, too. Out of the three dogs you agreed on, which is your most confident dog of the three? Great question. <laughs> I'm waiting for you to answer. <laughs> oh, you ready for me? Marina, probably. Of the three? Yeah. I would go, yeah. I think so, too. I just really like the matchup for you. I don't know what it okay. is, but it's just like I really like this fight, and I'm just kind of surprised that she's a dog. I don't know. I know Andrade is the former champ. I guess that's why, but yeah, I would actually agree with you on that. Who will be the shit talker to the presser? Um, probably Macanio. <laughs> I think probably. I think God, Brenda Figueroa. I think uh, Kayla Harrison is going to try talking some shit. Um, yeah, Holly won't reply to it. Probably. Holly won't say anything. She'll just look straight in the camera. I think uh, Bobby Green. Ar- might, not, I don't know if Bobby will against Jim. Oh, Ar- Bob- yeah, Ar- Armand is there, but Armand and Bobby. You know? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think Bobby's going to talk shit, but not to Jim Miller. He's going to talk shit to the other guys. <laughs> I think Sterling might talk some shit too. Probably not to Cater, but just in general. Yeah. I think Bo Nichols is going to talk some shit. Again, not to Brunch, just in general. You're going to see these guys talking shit, but not to their opponents, which is the funny yeah. thing, I think. Jamal Hill might talk some shit to Pereira. I could see that happening. <laughs> uh, it's a good question, though. I like that question a lot. Malcolm versus Bo makes a lot of sense. I, I, it's a make, fight that makes sense. Who would you guys get Figgy next if he wins his fight against Cody? Um, it would have to be someone in the top 10, right? It would have to be. I, to be honest, he's actually taking a step back here, but it is a good fight. I don't mind it. Uh, Maybe Song Yadong, he's ranked one above him. That would be okay. Or maybe Marlon Vera would be fun too. That would be a fun fight. Yeah. Right? Davis and Figueroa and Marlon. Oh, yeah. Or Bobby Peter Young. Or Peter Young. That'd be a fun one too. Um, Max Submission. Ah. Gaethje, was, he's been submitted what once by Khabib. That's it, right? I think. 
yeah. I feel like Max would knock him out if anything, honestly. Or sorry, he's been submitted twice. My bad. Obviously, Charles submitted him too. Oh yeah, of course. Like, yeah, yeah I think Max would finish him though with strikes if anything. Like Max is a lot of volume. I'm not completely writing Max off, by the way, Marcel. I think he's got a chance for sure. Um, because Justin's hateable, but I, I gotta lead Justin in that fight. Is the presser on Thursday yeah, the, whole fight, the, whole, the whole fight, the whole card? When will Marshall have his trip break? I don't think he's taking one in this card. He's gonna hold it in for the six hours. <laughs> Is the whole car going to be the presser? Yeah, yeah. Anyways, I, that's pretty much it. I, I don't know. I, mean, I I can't wait for this car. That's what I'm going to say. Um, I think we'll get out of here, Marcel, though. I, I think we're good. Guys, mm -hmm. really appreciate everyone joining us today, obviously. Uh, it's a special card. You know, enjoy it. Um, so there's a few things I want to plug um, really quick. So first off, my uh, my best bets will be at bookies.com as always. So be in the lookup for those. You already heard my picks here, but uh, I'll break down the fights in a little bit more detail. Um also, I'll be joining a sports interaction again. I went to their uh, headquarters for UFC 299. They invited me to their live stream. It's in downtown Toronto. I'm going to head back there this weekend. They invited me back. It's a good opportunity. So I'll be there this weekend uh, watching the card, live streaming, and, and, and tweeting as well during the fight. Looking forward to that. And, uh, yeah, like, share, subscribe, guys. I mean, I don't, I don't – my, 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 I'm not the best at promoting the podcast and, and, and myself. You know, I'm a modest guy. But, you know, like, share, subscribe. You know, we, we, do, a, we do a good job on this podcast. And my picks have still been really good this year, so have yours, Marcel. Um, there's a lot of podcasts on, on, on YouTube. You know, when I saw, you know, again, that Brian, uh, you know, the guy that does the, the consensus, he does all the tabulates, everyone's picks. I'm still number yeah. one on YouTube. I mean, I'm proud of myself, dude. 70%. I mean, listen. That's far enough, sir. Yeah, I'm proud of myself. It's not, again, it's not going to hold forever. You know? I, I don't know if it'll be first at the end of the year, but three and a half months is, or, uh, yeah, if you want to say three and a half or whatever it is, three months, it, Makes me feel good. So, I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm looking forward to this card. I mean, anything you want to say, buddy, before we get out of here? No, I want to say just enjoy the fights, guys. I mean, after this, we don't have a week of fights, you know. So enjoy it. Double. Yeah, yeah. That should be have a break. Okay. Um, so a couple questions. All right, I guess that's pretty much it. I appreciate that, man. Hope you're doing well. Like I said, dude. Uh, this is uh, you know, remember um, Brock Jar Brock Jardine he used to fight. Yeah, the of course. This is his this is his cousin. Um, this okay. Guy. Yeah, so it's kind of funny. Uh, maybe Brock will be a short notice replacement one day. Who knows? <laughs> Anyways, guys, we're going to get out of here. Talk to you guys soon. Hope you uh, enjoy the card.